For the last year and a half, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has consisted of 23 movies and some loosely interconnected TV shows and shorts, but we're going to kind of be ignoring those because that's what Marvel Studios is doing anyway. In one week, that will all change with the premiere of the Disney Plus series, WandaVision. If I'd released this video in July 2019, it could have been accurate for 18 months before becoming outdated. Because I waited until a week until WandaVision comes out, it's only gonna be up to date for one week. <laughs> and actually, now that I've said that, it's only gonna be up to date for one day. Anyway, let's talk about watch orders. There are two commonly used watch orders for the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, chronological order and release order. But there are actually a lot of other reasonable watch orders as well. The timeline order that's on Disney Plus right now isn't even the same as the chronological order that most fans were using before Disney Plus released that because it actually contradicts the timeline of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I think Marvel is just gonna forget was a show that ever existed. I actually have my own preferred watch order that is different from release order or chronological order, although it's pretty similar to both. The only way we can really know which order is the best is if we try all of them. So let's figure out every possible watch order for the Infinity Saga. If we allowed any imaginable permutation of the films, there would be 23 factorial orderings of 23 films. 2.585 times 10 to the 22 possible watch orders. That number would include watch orders where you watch Avengers Endgame before the Avengers, or just watch all of the movies in backwards order. Obviously, we don't want to include those. We want to just look at watch orders that actually kind of make sense. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to take this down to an individual level of any movie. To decide whether movie A should be watched before movie B, we're going to use these rules. Would movie A make sense to someone who's already seen movie B? Would movie B make sense if you didn't see movie A first? We can't ever say that release order isn't allowed. post credit scenes count. As far as I'm concerned, the post credit scene is part of the movie. And if something in the post credit scene violates one of our rules, then the rule is violated for the entire movie. Now, if you know Marvel, you know they try their best to make their movies enjoyable for people who haven't seen the previous movies. That way they make the most money. What that means is that rule one will come into play a lot more than rule two. In order to visualize the connections between the films that restrict our watch orders, we're gonna use a graph model. Now, graph theory is a field in math involving the study of graphs. What is a graph, you may ask? A graph is a mathematical construct consisting of vertices and edges. So in our model, the vertices represent the films, so one vertex is one film, and the edges represent connections between the films. And I think that the Context in which we're using them makes it pretty clear what they are. A vertex is just like a little, you know, thing. And then an edge is something that connects two vertices to each other. For this project, we're actually going to be using a specific type of graph, a directed acyclic graph. This sounds like really big words, but it's actually pretty simple. Directed means that the edges go in a direction. In other words, the edge between Iron Man and Iron Man 2 is saying you have to watch Iron Man before Iron Man 2, not you have to watch Iron Man 2 before Iron Man. There's a direction in which the edge goes. A cyclic means that there are no cycles in the graph. Now, a cycle means that if you travel along the edges in their direction, you can get back to the same point you already started in. So if you start from Iron Man, go to Iron Man 2, there shouldn't be another arrow going back to Iron Man. Otherwise, that's a cycle. So that's a DAG, a directed acyclic graph, and that's the type of graph that we're dealing with here. Since in our case, an edge from movie A to movie B tells us that we need to watch movie A before we watch movie B, any valid watch order will place movie A before movie B. This is called a topological sort of a DAG. The reason we can't have cycles is because they would make a valid topological sort impossible. Before watching Iron Man, you'd have to watch Iron Man 2. And before watching Iron Man 2, you'd have to watch Iron Man. So you could never watch either. So, acyclic. Instead of drawing an arrow on every single line, we're just going to use vertex position to indicate direction. If a vertex is to the left of another vertex, that means the direction is this way. Iron Man is to the left of Iron Man 2, so the direction goes from Iron Man to Iron Man 2. And I just think that's a little simpler in the visualization. Every edge in the graph is directed from left to right. Now, it may seem like a lot of work to model every single connection between every Marvel movie in this way, but we don't actually have to model every single connection. 
we can simplify the graph a lot by getting rid of redundant edges. Here's an example. Suppose we have a graph with three vertices and three edges as I'm showing here. Movie A needs to be watched before movie B, movie B needs to be watched before movie C, and movie A needs to be watched before movie C. What do I need to watch before I watch movie C? Well, before you watch movie C, you need to watch movie B. Before you need to watch movie B, you need to watch movie A. So you already have to watch movie A before movie C. The edge between movie A and C isn't necessary to communicate this information because by the time we get to movie C, we'll already have watched movie A anyway. This means that we can greatly simplify the graph by getting rid of these redundant edges and only focusing on the connections which would add a new constraint to the graph. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about my graph and I'm just gonna disclaimer right here. This is totally subjective. There are a million different ways you could do this based on little subtleties because it is based on the question, do you need to have watched this movie before you watch this movie? There are a number of different opinions on what the answer to that question is for various movies. I will defend my opinions here, but if you disagree, that's fine. If you do disagree with me on a point, you can make your own version of the graph and use the techniques we used to figure out how many possible watch orderings there would be based on your restrictions. Without further ado, we'll start. And if you don't want to watch this part, you can just skip ahead to the next section. So like I said, we're not violating release order ever. So that means that there's nothing you need to watch before. The first Marvel movie, Iron Man. Next up, The Incredible Hulk. The post credit scene of The Incredible Hulk features Tony Stark from Iron Man. This means that we need to watch Iron Man before we watch The Incredible Hulk. Next up, Iron Man 2. Now, this movie is one of the most awkward parts of this whole thing. It picks up directly from Iron Man, so that's pretty simple, but then it also references Hulk in kind of a strange way. In the end of the movie, you can see footage from the Incredible Hulk playing in the background while Nick Fury is giving Tony Stark a job as a consultant for the Avengers Initiative. Marvel actually released a short called The Consultant, which shows us that the ending scene from Incredible Hulk with Tony Stark takes place after this scene from Iron Man 2. The two movies take place roughly simultaneously. Part of one movie takes place after part of the second movie, but part of the first movie takes place before part of the second movie. So even though Tony Stark appeared in a film released between Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2, chronologically that scene actually takes place after Iron Man 2. And for that reason, I don't think it makes sense to say that you have to watch that scene before Iron Man 2. However, it also doesn't make sense to say that you have to watch it after Iron Man 2 because that would make release order illegal. For that reason, we're just going to be leaving them disconnected from each other. Next up, Thor. Thor follows from the post credit scene of Iron Man 2. It wouldn't make sense to watch this scene in Iron Man 2 after you'd already seen Thor. So for that reason, we say you have to have watched Iron Man 2 before Thor. Remember, this is assuming you're going to watch all of the movies at some point. Since we have to watch Iron Man 2, we also need to watch Iron Man 1 by extension. Now, this film also contains a minor reference to The Incredible Hulk, where Dr. Eric Selvig says, I knew the scientist, a pioneer in gamma radiation. Shield showed up and, um, he wasn't heard from again. However, these events that he's talking about, those take place before any of the events of the movie The Incredible Hulk. Therefore, I think it's perfectly reasonable to watch Hulk after this movie because Dr. Selvig isn't spoiling any of the events in the movie or talking about things that happened in the movie. He's just talking about things that the movie tells us previously happened. So for that reason, I think that you don't need to watch The Incredible Hulk before Thor, despite Thor referencing The Incredible Hulk. Captain America, The First Avenger. So this one's a little weird. It actually references every single previous film in the MCU. It references The Incredible Hulk, sort of, because The Incredible Hulk alludes to the super soldier program expanded upon in this movie. Iron Man 2, in the similarity between Tony Stark and his father, Thor, with this location appearing in both films and these other references. The Tesseract was the jewel of Odin's treasure room. Yggdrasil, tree of the world. Yggdrasil, the world's tree. For that reason, you could argue that you need to watch all of those before Captain America because it references things from all of them. However, Captain America takes place 70 years prior to all of those films. 
And nothing in the film is dependent on you understanding those references. They're just Easter eggs. They don't violate any of our rules. So for that reason, we're actually going to ignore all of these connections and say there's nothing you need to have watched before you watch Captain America the First Avenger. Captain America does end with a trailer for the Avengers, but because it's a trailer for another movie and not an actual post credit scene, I don't consider it, even though I normally consider post credit scenes. Final movie of phase one, The Avengers, easy. Watch all of them before you watch it. We're done with phase one. Phase two. Iron Man 3 follows directly from The Avengers, which means you also have to have seen every other movie before it. Thor The Dark World also follows directly from The Avengers and does not reference Iron Man 3 in any way, so just like Iron Man 3, you need to have seen The Avengers and every other movie before it. Next up, Captain America The Winter Soldier. At first glance, many would say that this film is exactly like the previous two in that it follows directly from The Avengers and does not reference Iron Man 3 and Thor The Dark World. However, I would disagree. Remember, rule one is, would this previous movie make sense to someone who's already seen the later movie? So, would Iron Man 3 make sense to someone who's already seen Captain America the Winter Soldier? Would Thor the Dark World make sense to someone who's already seen Captain America the Winter Soldier? And I would say no, and here's why. In Captain America the Winter Soldier, Maria Hill starts working at Stark Industries, and is later shown in Avengers Age of Ultron to be working as Tony Stark's personal assistant. Mind if I borrow Ms. Hill? She's all yours. However, in Iron Man 3, she is nowhere to be seen. Therefore, I would argue that Iron Man 3 does not make sense to someone who has already seen Captain America the Winter Soldier and must be watched before it. Thor the Dark World, this is more minor, but it's still important in my opinion. In Captain America the Winter Soldier, we see the complete decimation of S.H.I.E.L.D. and it's highly publicized, the whole world knows about it. Thor the Dark World makes several references to S.H.I.E.L.D. So it would be very confusing to see these references after having seen S.H.I.E.L.D. destroyed. Next thing you know, we have S.H.I.E.L.D. calling all over, Area 51 in the place. The stupid S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't calling me back. What S.H.I.E.L.D.? The secret. For this reason, I would argue that you need to watch Thor the Dark World before Captain America the Winter Soldier. Because if you watch it after, that line won't make any sense. Watching those two movies will knock out all the rest of them, so we're done with that. Guardians of the Galaxy follows from a post credit scene in Thor the Dark World. Uh, it does not reference Iron Man 3 or Captain America the Winter Soldier in any way, and that knocks out the rest of the movies, so we don't need to check anything else. Age of Ultron, this movie follows from a post credit scene in Captain America the Winter Soldier. Additionally, this movie references the Infinity Stones, which were explained in Guardians of the Galaxy, and shows on screen in Thor's vision the Power Stone, which was first revealed in Guardians of the Galaxy. For that reason, I think you should watch Guardians of the Galaxy before watching this movie, and that knocks out all the previous films as well. Ant-Man. This movie makes several references to Age of Ultron, including... I think our first move should be calling the Avengers. They're probably too busy dropping cities out of the sky. Requiring you to watch all the previous movies as well. Civil War. Ant-Man's presence in this movie requires us to have seen Ant-Man, and that knocks out all the previous movies. Doctor Strange. Many people say that this line in Doctor Strange... I've got a 35-year-old Air Force colonel, crushed his lower spine in some kind of experimental armor, mid-thoracic burst fracture. ...is a reference to this scene in Civil War. However, the director and Marvel Studios have confirmed several times that that is not in fact true, so I am not going to say that you need to have seen Civil War before this movie. This movie does not reference Civil War or Ant-Man in any way. It doesn't really reference Age of Ultron either, but it does introduce a fifth Infinity Stone. Now, in Age of Ultron and Thor's vision, you only see four Infinity Stones, which would be kind of confusing if you had already seen this movie introducing this fifth Infinity Stone. For that reason, I think this movie should be watched after Avengers Age of Ultron. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 does not reference Doctor Strange at all. It does have a small reference to Captain America Civil War. Namely, we have a Stan Lee cameo where he references his own Stan Lee cameo from Civil War. Oh man. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, at that time, I was a Federal Express man. Are you Tony's stank? However, this movie has actually been stated many times to take place before Captain America Civil War. And so I think it's kind of weird to say you have to have seen Civil War first. Additionally, this reference is tiny, and getting the reference while giving you a slight chuckle isn't going to throw you off at all. So for that reason, I don't think that you need to have watched Civil War before you watch this movie. 
Now this movie doesn't reference any other movie in the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe except for Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Spider-Man Homecoming. This film does not reference Doctor Strange, does not call back to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It follows directly from Captain America Civil War, even including a crossover scene with Captain America Civil War. This movie needs to be watched after Captain America Civil War, and that knocks out all the other previous movies as well. For Ragnarok, Doctor Strange has a cameo in this movie, which knocks out Doctor Strange and all its predecessors. The only remaining films are Ant-Man, Captain America Civil War, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and it references none of those. Black Panther. This movie picks up right after Civil War and does not reference any of the movies released in between. Avengers Infinity War connects to all of the most recent movies and by proxy forces you to watch all of the previous movies as well. Ant-Man and the Wasp. For the most part, this movie follows from events in Civil War. However, there is a post credit scene which shows how the climax of Infinity War affected characters in this movie. However, it really doesn't spoil Infinity War at all. It doesn't even tell you that it's connected to Infinity War. For that reason, I actually think it's fine to watch this before Infinity War, but you have to have seen Civil War before this. None of the other movies released in between are referenced in any way, so let's move on to Captain Marvel. So this movie is very commonly watched right after Captain America the First Avenger as the second film watched. However, according to the rules we've established, I don't think I can actually permit that. Unlike Ant-Man and the Wasp, the post credit scene of this film continues directly from the end of Infinity War in a very explicit and obvious way. I actually think that you should have already seen Infinity War before you watch Captain Marvel. I'm just trying to create a consistent list of rules. And if popular opinion disagrees, that's fine. I just wanna be consistent with the rules I'm using for the other movies. And for that reason, I'm saying you have to have watched Infinity War before you see Captain Marvel. In Avengers Endgame, you have to watch everything that came before. Lastly, Spider-Man Far From Home picks up directly from Endgame, da 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 da. We're done. Hey guys, it's Will from the future, and I just realized that I totally forgot to tell you guys what the best part is about this graph. The awesome thing about this graph is that it makes it super easy to see which watch orders are legal or illegal. All you have to do is imagine that these little edges are rubber bands and you can stretch them back and forth. Then to figure out if you can do a watch order, all you have to do is just move these along the rubber bands. So I can pull this this way and stretch out this rubber band and that's still fine, right? And I can pull this this way and stretch out this rubber band. I can't stretch this past Iron Man because it runs into Iron Man. However, this guy, I can pull past Iron Man because it isn't restricted by its rubber band. So that means that I can watch Captain America, then Iron Man, then Iron Man 2, then Hulk, then Thor, then the Avengers. Or I can move Thor along the rubber bands back here, and then I can watch Captain America, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Thor, Incredible Hulk, Avengers. And that, that's what's so fun about this graph. It really makes it easy to see which watch orders you can do and can't do because you can just sort of slide these around. So now that we've created our DAG, finding the number of watch orders is actually really simple. I just Googled some code for topological sort of graph. We tweak the code to work with ours. We run it and we get the final output and it says 132,210 possible watch orders of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Wow, that is going to take 754 years to try every single one of those watch orders. I guess that'll keep us occupied for a really long time. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, comment, subscribe, bell, whatever else. I recently made a video on my Broken Telly channel that I do with my brothers, and it's called The Robber Steals Christmas. It's part of our very popular robber series of videos, and by very popular, I mean not popular at all. But if you wanna watch that, go ahead over there right now and check it out. Uh, and otherwise, um, I'll see you next time.